Oh hey. It's tech someday. It's it's tech day. We'll pretend that it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday somewhen. How's everyone doing? I'm just I'm gonna hang out for a couple minutes before I really get started because so I haven't alerted people that I'm even starting. I should do that. Wednesday. That's right. Tech Tuesday is more of a state of mind rather than an actual day. And yeah, that tracks. Look, this would have taken place on Tuesday if it weren't for the fact that uh, the Star Renegades dev team and everybody else was uh, really inconsiderate towards me and they had to release a really freaking awesome game on the day that I'm normally streaming doing programming. So I had to play a game that I was extremely excited for instead of programming. Literally nothing that I could have done about this. Y'all should go play uh, Star Renegades. It's real good. Super, super fun. Really into it. Was lazy. I forget what I did. Oh yeah, that was just a thing that I could include. Um, pull that in for um, IRB. All right, let's get started. Up. Op code list. That would be under. Processor instructions. Let's keep on moving forward. Ink. Just as a reminder for everyone, uh, I am just going down the list of opcodes. Um, just add uh, 6502.org slash tutorials slash uh, 6502opcodes.html. Um, pretty good for just giving you the, the uh, mnemonic and then telling you like what the opcode actually is, giving you an idea of what uh, what it's going to do. Um, most of the opcodes, the name is pretty self-explanatory, and then it tells you what flags are going to be touched by this opcode. Finder news, how's it going? So I'm pretty sure that we've done ink. Really, have we not? We've done we've done decrement. Ink increments at memory. Okay. So we will be E6. Mm -hmm. 
five cycles for zero pay. Let's hop back up a little bit. Remember exactly how I'm formatting all these comments. So these are all A lot of this is going to be pretty easy to... I'm trying to get an X11 window that's embedded into another X11 window to resize properly. That sounds like hell. Yeah, I have no experience with actual like programming targeting X11. Um, I imagine that Nesting window contexts like that is not particularly easy, though. Actually, hey. Our deck logic is going to be pretty darn useful here. Set by X100 there. <laughs> yep, uh, set N and Z, perfect. Hey, I'm willing to bet. Zero page, zero page X, absolute, absolute X. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm just gonna steal all of this. Same number of cycles as well. Delightful. Good works for building other embedded windows, but not for the standalone app. Hmm. Interesting. Always check. Uh, repo, see the last time that area of code was touched, there's a lot of dead X11. That's my understanding as well. I got a lot of, uh, rid of a lot of the dead stuff, uh, between V19 and V20. Oh, hmm. Go E6, F6, E, E, F, E, perfect. the extra cycle even if we cross a page. 
absolute pick swap set. Oh, you're working on BST stuff. Um, trying to get those working under uh, X11. That's super cool. So read advanced PC is going to be taking place uh, inside the actual program code here. Just a little bit of a bummer, but not too big of a deal. reading a important note about the jump instruction, which is that indirect jump must never use a vector beginning on the last byte of a page. Address 3000 contains 40, 30FF contains 80, and 3100 contains 50. Result of jump, 30FF, indirect 30FF, which we would expect to be 8040, 4080 rather. Um, result of it will be a transfer of control. To 4080 rather than 50.
at the low byte from the address 30FF and the high byte from 3000. Oh, I see. I see what they're saying. It won't walk to the next page. It'll wrap around to the beginning of the page. Sounds like a really good, um, really good bit of code to use to uh, check if you're being emulated. Jenin, and how's it going? Maybe answer, welcome in. Ariel, thank you for the good luck. Metanon, hello. First thing first. Actually, no, we don't we don't need to do it this way. Easier way. Trying to think of a good way to, to keep us in the same page. I know how. Actually, it's even easier than I thought. If we are on the edge, we are going to yeah, we're going to, to take the most significant bite from 
Low significant bite, plus one. And limited to one bite. So our page is never going to change. Yep, that's good. My sound may be a bit low. You have both Twitch and your computer's volume at max. Hmm. Been, I've been watching my videos back, and for the most part, I've been pretty happy with the levels. Um, looking at my uh, looking at my histogram, I am less than one decibel away from uh, clipping. So I don't I don't think so. I don't I don't think that. I don't think that my mic needs to be turned up. <laughs> Jesus the Frog, welcome in. Yo, Kate Libsy, how's it going? You've been shown the errors of your ways and you agree with the use of Ruby to write this. I'm curious what you mean by that. I don't think that there's necessarily a wrong choice to write. I mean... There, there is often a best choice for whatever you're writing, but for something like this, where we're writing a, um, we're writing something kind of more for fun than for putting it into production, I feel like you'd, you'd have to work pretty hard to find an inappropriate tool. So between jump and jump to subroutine, there's a pretty clear pattern that's starting to emerge here, which is we have... This is an address mode that we do already kind of... Um, We do kind of already have an absolute uh, read, but it's doing a little bit of extra work because so far, all of the operations that have been defined have wanted to work a certain way with absolute addressing. This is the first time that that we've ended up in a little bit different. So if this becomes a pattern where I'm I'm reading um, addresses out of the uh, out of the um, the program memory within the definitions, uh, this will be something that we need to abstract out. Oh, no worries, Metanod. No disturbance at all. I appreciate if somebody's having problems uh, hearing the stream, it's better for them to speak up, even if it's the case where it's not the configuration on my end. Like, that's that's the way you're going to get... That's, that's how you find out where the problem is. If a lot of people weren't able to hear me, I would have wanted to know about it. I need to double check. I think I know how the stack works on the 6502. Look up. 
starting addresses. See, it, it in fact does not work the way that I, think, that I, that I thought that it does. The, um, Okay, so a push is going to write, we're going to start at 100. And we're going to walk up. Mingle Pixel, welcome in. How's it going? So... Red advanced, red advanced. We are now leave. We not to find the stack register. I have to find a stack. How did I? All right, so we are still. So here we're we're starting to think about initial state. Um, Do that closer to death. doesn't break anything so far. It's good. Actually, our stack pointer doesn't
doesn't actually care what it is. So that, that init function might not be worthwhile. But it's good to have that to begin with. Yeah, 6502 uses OO to, uh, what I'm reading is 100 to uh, 1FF for um, the stack. Yeah, I can wrap around. There's a potential if with with a nasty programmer. There's a potential for um, for an off by one for a fence post right here. So. Yeah, Jesus the Frog, the vast majority of the assembly that I've done is x86. Um, I've done some MSP430, um, wrote a really bad hacky emulator for that, for um, working through um, the uh, micro-corruption CTF, which was a ton of fun. Recommend it to anyone, whether or not you're in security, I think that it's a good experience. You think the 6502 has some strange behavior for indirect jump when the jump address is at a page foundry? Yes, you'll actually notice uh, for jump indirect, we already implemented that. Uh, yeah, it refuses to cross the page boundary is the strange behavior.
gonna Let's see. Zero, zero X, salute. X, Y, correct X, joint. Cycle. Five. Take four cycles. Absolute. Absolute is A D. Catch up cap real quick. Truth, you never understood this because it sounds like it's harder to handle whole math than just to add an incrementer and two extra plus lines. But can work on either PC or the data address. Page boundary is just high byte wonkiness. Uh, yeah, that's about right, Metanol. Address for stack wrap around the store. You are absolutely correct, B. Jonas. Good catch. We'll fix that in a moment. You're right. Uh, yeah, register uh, S plus uh, hex 101 and uh, 1FF as the address uh, definitely would still would still cause that. I need to be anding outside of that. In fact, let me fix that right now. You are 100% correct there. Also, um, that would have been a fun bug to fix. We write the least significant byte first. Technically, semantically works, but next instruction being memoized just reduces the amount of time that we spend in the function. which I believe was AD, yes. I did uh, actually, so normally I don't like to do work on the tech stuff off screen, but I did Google for some test programs, and yeah, there's a couple of pretty good ones. And don't worry about backseating. Like, this isn't a blind playthrough of a game. I'm just, I'm hanging out with people. I, I happen to be the person with hands on a keyboard, you know, writing the code, but 
the purpose of all this is for people to hang out, hopefully pick up something. Um, and if I if I make mistakes on stream, that, frankly, that's better. I think that um, I think the more people who are willing to make mistakes publicly, rather than trying to uh, to, to put forward this idea that they are an expert and uh, that good ideas flow from them, um, the better. I mean, Korndan, I would assert that you probably know way more about programming. You know way more about my field, whether it's programming or InfoSec that we're talking about, than I know about yours. Because your field is... It's rocket science, Korndan. Your your field is, is rocket science. What am I planning on doing this? Will I be implementing a uh, toy emulator for the entire system, including PPU and sound chip as well? Um, yeah, that's kind of the, that's, that's probably where it's going to end up going, <laughs> honestly. Um, one step at a time, of course, but yeah, that's, that's probably where we end up. Indirect X offset. So X No, X A one. Reading, wrong thing. It's Y. It's B. Now we're going to be doing load X. Which is probably going to look very similar to load uh, accumulator. Be doing the negative and zero flag. There's obvious, uh, <laughs> obvious code duplication here that we can care about, but I'm not going to care about it just yet. Zero page 
Absolute, absolute bet. No indirect. A2, A6. Salute is... Oh, interesting. We not have... We don't. We don't have a zero page Y offset yet. to get lost. That's terrible. Sorry. Did I just... I undid the copy. Okay. Boink. have indirect, so those go away. We'll have an absolute and absolute Y. Page zero and Y. And we have a medium. Okay, cool. Try this again. What else? A2. Yeah, I've just gone super duper uh, copy and paste heavy. That's fine. Six. And Y is B6. Salute is AE. Y will be B. Now the stuff below this I need to clean up. LDA is store X, LDX, and then all this crap. And extra end no less.
believe that's probably fine. Let's make sure that we load. We do. All right. No syntax errors. That's good. And we can. I'm going to check that out as well. And we still run. That's good. Dillahunt Software. It's fun watching me implement this in Ruby. Your first NES emulator was in Ruby. Nifty. Brings back memories. Yeah, I'm having a, a ton of fun with it. Brinleth. That's right. It's Tech Twins Day. Love to see it. I have a ton of chat to catch up on. Yeah, no, Corn Dan, like you're you do you do really hard things. And while I am extremely interested in learning from people who are super smart and super experienced in areas where I'm not. Um, I would never, ever think to uh, to assert that I have even one iota of the knowledge that you have in your fields. Some egrets, welcome in. Literally can't think hard enough to even parse text right now, let alone say anything useful about hardware you know nothing about. You're just here for the fancy letters on the screen. Well, I've got good news about these letters and how fancy they are. And they are definitely on, they're on my screen. Uh, I'm given to believe they're on at least a few other people's screens as well. Uh, B. Jonas, I'm thinking of an NES um, for the first, first go at, at this. Um, I've never done graphical programming, so the point at which I have to start dealing with the PPU is going to be real fun. Um, Look forward to watching me fall on my face a ton. Jesus Frog, you have no problem making mistakes as long as you catch them before they go to production. Well, the nice thing about writing a toy emulator is that I don't, I don't have to give even one half of a shit about whether or not this code is ever going to reach production. It's, it's not. It's super not. But overall, I am fairly pleased with uh, the DSL that we kind of arrived at for describing the behavior of a CPU. Um, I think before I'm completely done with this particular like series of Tech Tuesdays or whatever, um, I'm going to want to implement the... Uh, uh, after I do the NES, I'm going to want to go back and do a Game Boy. The reason for that is because the Game Boy has some pretty interesting behavior um, because it's based off of the Z80. Um, it has registers which are uh, the uh, combination of other registers. And that's something which currently this DSL doesn't support. So I think that it'll be fun to have something that we have, you know, productionized in that we've shown that it works once the 6502 is done and hopefully we have a working NES. Um, then we can go back and say, here's how we can update, you know, a DSL that's in active use without breaking history. I think that'll be pretty fun to do. I make a SMS or a ZX Spectrum emulator if I do a Z80. I don't really know anything about the internals of either of those systems. Uh, my first thought was a Game Boy, just because, you know, if, if I think about it as the 80, the first thing that I think is Game Boy. But uh, I have, like, no concrete plans there. But yeah, since somebody earlier was asking which system I would want to, um, 
which system I would want to do uh, with the 6502 uh, that I'm building right now. I will point out that I have not implemented any of the logic for decimal mode. So there's there's no BCD support currently. Which limits what you're able to do. Insofar as I'm aware, it limits it to exactly one system. Good. It's time for load Y. We have immediate zero page X absolute. Three four 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 plus three four four plus nice. We are AO A four or A C B C. Four. Yeah, so clearly we've got um, some code duplication here. There's This is... I don't, I don't know that I dislike it, though. Any way that we would have that makes this less duplicated does increase runtime complexity, which is... Suboptimal. We're already we're eating one method call uh, by doing it this way, just because we're doing this in Ruby. We don't have access to inlining. Built in. How's it going? God, I didn't I didn't parse your name until I said it out loud. I love it. Yeah, the NES's chip, to my knowledge, uh, they they didn't um, they didn't not have the transistors for decimal mode, uh, but the uh, the lines were cut so that it didn't violate the patent.
go. We will set the carry flag, the original register A. Register A to the new. Get two cycles. Steel. Okay, let's see. Zero page. X. Absolute X. Okay. So let's go ahead and steal those. I'm not surprised that as, as this has gone on in terms of implementation, more and more of it is um, it's ended up being copy, paste, slight tweaks, because this is largely at this point a, uh, a descriptive language rather than focusing too deeply on the internal logic of um, how these instructions work. Seven two five six six seven clean. Set our pop codes for a Six five six. I be which garden? How's it going? You know, the fun part of emulating the actual full system is going to be the sound hardware. Yeah, audio programming is another thing that I don't <laughs> know anything about, so it's going to be fun. Wait, no. Really? Two? No operation is very slow. You got it. Resizing doesn't work anymore, but you can fix that. Congratulations. I'm glad to hear it.
immediate. Zero, zero, X. Absolute. Y. Indirect. Yes. Cool. Five plus. Six, four plus, four plus. Four, three. D nineteen oh one eleven. Nineteen oh one eleven. All right, so I've been going at it for about an hour here. I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna stretch my legs, refill my water, mostly just top off my water. But I'm gonna take like five minutes. Now's a great time to stand up, stretch your legs. If you've been staring at your monitor all day, like look out your window, look at something far away. It's good for your eyes. It sucks when your eyes start going. Any thoughts on audio video yet? As far as roll my own versus a library like SDL? SDL is the first one that I thought of. Um, I assume it's gonna be pretty easy as such things tend to go. Um, I know nothing as far as graphical programming goes. I've basically my entire life lived on a terminal. Um, so I'm definitely not rolling my own. It's nearing midnight here. You're gonna go to bed. Metanoc, thank you for hanging out. I hope you had fun. You'd recommend SDL? Well, then that's a that's a pretty strong recommendation. I'll probably, that's, that's what I was thinking of. So that's probably what I'm gonna go with. Anyway, I'm gonna be right back everyone. And, um, yeah, I, I, I sit tight, except like stand up, stretch your legs, do things for your health. I'll be right back.
Come back. Wango has showed up while I was away. What? Water's on the counter still. I'm not back. I lied. I am Starbird. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Tina. Normally, I play games, but today I'm not playing games. I'm playing press keys on a keyboard. Also, my water's over there, so um, I'll be right back. Water is very important. I recommend everybody drink some. Figured your audience could use more coding streams. Well, good news. Genesis Algorithms, how's it going? Seven more, eight total. Yes, eh? Yeah, this is uh, Ruby. Uh, the first stream and a half or so um, was defining a DSL, a, a domain specific language. Uh, by which we could really just describe an emulator. And after that, it's been bit by bit implementing the 6502. It's been real fun. I realized I didn't put the space after all these. It's going to bug me. Oh, hey, all of these register instructions are going to affect negative and zero. That's good to remember. Let's pull Dex up just so that I can look at it. thing that actually jumps out at me right now is that we can just minimize register x because it's a method call so it's a tiny 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 uh, time save but it is a time save we 
moving A to X, so we're memoizing A, we're moving X to A, we're memoizing X, setting A, perfect. Next up is two, decrement X. Go. This is marginally faster than doing a modulo. Mike's the pick. How's it going? Uh, yes, you did hear the word memoize. Is this the code to emulate raw instructions? Yes, it is. X is C A. is increments. Let's see what this up just to make sure that everything is right. Oh, that's right. I actually don't have to mask this. Except that I want to for these. Actually, this would have been a bug if I had tested more thoroughly earlier. We wouldn't have been setting the flags correctly. Um, the Z flag would not have been set correctly. So increment X is V8. Uh, tax, TXA, DEX, INX, answer A to Y. All right. Cool. So the next four are going to be previous four, except we're using the Y register now. So you think your coding streams just end up being you yelling at your code for not working right? I mean, I've, I've had plenty of that um, for my tech streams as well. Alright, transfer A to Y. So this is, we've gone from A, 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 C, A, B8, A8, 98, C8, and C8, C8. Not too much that we have to worry about changing here. It's kind of nice. Cool. Check A8, 98, 88, C8. Cool. Awesome. 
hardest instructions will probably be ADC and SBC. Uh, so actually, ADC, thankfully, already done. Um, subtract with borrow. I'm pretty sure I can just invert the bits, add one, and then use the perform ADC logic otherwise. I hope. Thank you for the good luck on the code. What's the third input variable for the defop? So the third input variable for defop currently is not actually used. However, um, let's pop up to, for example, here, 4A, um, pulling from the, the zero page. You'll notice that uh, the, um, the mnemonics have a, a string in them, um, and that the string is not just the name of the thing. It, it is actually the full uh, mnemonic for the opcode, uh, and it is a format string. So I need to know ahead of time how many bytes I should be pulling off. Um, in the future, part of this project is that I'm going to be uh, disassembling, uh, building a disassembler for it as well. Uh, the the 6502 definitely has an overflow overflow flag. This is why you have to drink water. But since I just got this host, just to catch everybody else up, this is really the where where all the magic is happening. Um, so. The, the early streams were building out a DSL specifically so that we could just define a CPU on the fly. Um, so you'll see it over here. We're calling new CPU. We get the name. Uh, bit, uh, bit width. And then from there, uh, that gives us a new class which has a ton of really handy uh, methods on it. Things like a method where we can just define a new register. Automatically builds out all of the uh, convenience methods that we're going to need with it. Has a default um, bit width for the register, although uh, that can be overridden. That's going to be a theme throughout all of this. Likewise, uh, We've got a stack register that we can um, originally, uh, actually, def register and def stack were different. Um, right now, they're not. That might change in the future, so I'm leaving them currently as duplicated code that could be collapsed into a single. Like right now, I could just change this entire definition into a, a method alias, but for right now, I'm not. Uh, likewise, a little bit of a specialized uh, register, which is defining our program counter. And also our flags counter. Uh, flags counter, or flags register being a little bit of a special case, since we can define flags within the flags um, register. So basically, we get an 8-bit register, and we're allowed to say that, uh, for example, the carry flag is the 0th bit. It is the least significant bit of our of our flags register. And then other than that, we can define operations, which for all intents and purposes right now, uh, really just creates a new um, a new method with which is do and then the opcode that we're defining it as. Uh, there we go. 
back to where we were previously. How many things do I have left to do? Uh, a, a fair few, but uh, I'm wondering how many. Only one more um, instruction left from my original set of instructions that we implemented to uh, just kind of proof of concept this. So that's exciting. Either way, I'm, I'm hoping to be done with all of the... Um... all of the opcodes. Um, right now, only the legal opcodes. I saw earlier that um, Dillahan asked if we're going to be doing the illegal opcodes. Um, eventually, my plan is to commit opcode crimes, but presently, um, Presently, I just want the official spec implemented. Later on, we can we can commit opcode crimes, and that'll be real fun. Where am I? Did register instructions. Next is rotate left. It is important to um, really implement your boilerplate, if you're going to call it. Z and C, that looks good. It's right to one position. I don't think it's possible for negative to ever be po to, to be one here. I think that we're just clearing the negative bit. consequence of having decimal mode flag on a 6502 implementation on an NES and uh, I believe that the processor flag existed but I, I believe that it was never actually used um, specifically I'm pretty sure that, that it existed it could be set but even if it was set it had no um, impact on calls to ADC or SBC There we go. Dullahan, on all of Dullahan's NES games, CLD gets called in the reset vector code to clear it. Not sure if commercial games do the same. Would be interesting to see. So let's read Ockrand. Right. I do that because... Right one. Yeah, as long as we're getting one bite, this is this is always zero. There's no reason to do that extra math.
Here we go. It's logical shift right. Now we're looking at rotate left. Carry is shifted into bit zero, original bit seven, push it into carry. Cool. And next there. You like that again? read, rotate left, We start over. <laughs> totally lost my place. All right, read in the bite, rotating left. Negative logic doesn't change. Carry logic, however, does change. The original bite, because we're rotating left, get the most significant bit there. And that is our carry flag. Helps if we name things correctly. While that's all in my head, let's go ahead and implement rotate right. Yo, matchbox math. How's it going? Yeah, coding as a category would be nice. Um, Instead of just science and technology, it's a pretty broad category. Matt, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. You'll let me know how it's going through song. Well, that sounds like the last two of your streams that I've caught. Um, although you don't stream anywhere near as much as I would prefer. At least not at times that I tend to be able to catch you. But folks who are here, you should be following Matt if you enjoy people who are very talented, uh, both at video games and at composing music. Now, if you can't stand people who have both of those talents, don't follow Matt. Um, he's just going to piss you right off. Go. Now we don't have to mask. Let's see, shift up to seven. Negative logic doesn't change. Carry logic a million percent changes.
I see. All right. The difference between LSR and just rotate is the involvement of the carry flag and where it changes. Cool. Here. Simulator 0x absolutely. Look at that, we can just steal previous typing. We do need to store that differently now. I just realized that I probably am not setting flags appropriately for my other A register mode fields. Am I winning? Um, no, computers are winning constantly. Will I be testing the boilerplates? Yes. Um, specifically, I'm going to be throwing uh, one of the really expertly done uh, test ROMs at this once it's done. Dang. Can't believe that my good friend Matchbox Matt just wrote a song. Here and now. I love it. And I just realized that I'm not piping. Piping up uh, my anything but MPD through the stream. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Maybe. Okay. 
I'm just, I'm here to tell you all that A, Jack is amazing, but B, a huge pain in the ass to work with. There we go. Now, now it should capture Matchbox Matt's new song. So for one, it's perfect. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. It's great. Um, I'm not sure if that's Matchbox Matt harmonizing with himself or if Matt has a partner in crime. Either way, it's fantastic. All right, back to normal music. Lower quality music, because it's not from Mashbox Men. That is, that is in fact just Matt harmonizing with himself. Amazing. Perfect. No piping necessary for my my ears only. Oh shit. Well, too late. Ariel, it's worth the time and effort. Um Carla's great. I, I really like using Jack for everything, just everything, but also specifically, uh, it makes streaming a joy. Um, most programs don't have Jack support built in, so 90% of what you're going to deal with is still coming through your default Pulse sync, which really fucking sucks. However, because Pulse is better than Windows's internal audio subroutine stuff, you can just make additional Pulse syncs, and then you can have programs output to your secondary Pulse sync that you've named secondary pulse sync. I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to be called. Just something descriptive. But then you can use that to isolate your audio if you want to. But for the most part, like, I, I mostly do stuff inside VMs anyway, so I don't have to worry about it because I just pass through a video card and my video card has HDMI out, with which has an audio device. Eaton RL, how's it going? Matt, every time that you've streamed doing your college uh, work, it's been really fascinating. It's been great to watch. You want to do voice changery stuff with Jack as well as uh, streaming stuff. Yeah, um, there's VSDs and stuff like that uh, that you can use. I, I actually very briefly had it on screen. Um, my big thing is I'm using uh, the only reason that Carla is involved at all is I want to uh, have a gate EQ and then compressor, um, which just overall makes makes the, the stream sound just a little bit tighter for my mic. Rotate right, yes.
good. We need to get... So these are all rotate rights. So rotate right is 6A66. Page X offset is 7667. Or 25667 for time. 6667. Great. The mnemonics look good. We're making calls to perform ROR. Left is two A two six three six two six three six. Absolute addressing two A three. Two five six six seven two five six six seven. Timing is good. currently working on. Uh, so I am presently implementing the logic for a 6502 CPU. Previously, uh, with previous Tech Tuesday streams, we've done a, um, a domain-specific language that lets us kind of define emulators in a fairly declarative syntax. So now it's just about getting things actually implemented and you know, seeing if it works at all. So I'm about to manually do stack stuff again, which tells me that it's time to I think that I think that making a push and pop here is good. I think that that's something that should be built in.
So things that I'll need to know when I'm defining the CPU, what the base address for the stack will be, in which direction the stack grows. Uh, Matchbox Matt, yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah, there's um, Banana on Windows uh, for similar functionality to Jack. I'm not super familiar with it, but I know that uh, there's a number of other streamers who have used it to good effect, and it's um, for runners who need a way to split audio who don't uh, know how to do it otherwise. It's what um, the GDQ folks tend to recommend. You have a free single virtual audio cable installed, but banana and potato added latency for you. Ooh, that sucks.
can't imagine a case where I'm going to want to change the base on the fly. For now, we're not going to bother with that. That's a really easy change to make. That's actually not going to work. Pretty sure. No, that'll work. Cool. Wait, no. Pretty sure that works. If not, it'll be a real fun bug to, to hunt down. Matt, it's always a, just, it's a delight whenever you're around. So I'm glad to hear that I can provide a good environment for you to bang out some work too. Forgotten Proxy, how's it going? Welcome in. It's fine. Let's make sure we're not crashing. Crashing. Probably one. No. Are you yelling at me? Here. Oh, yeah, that's that's probably why. We call it stack push stack pop. Hmm. You know what? We're at, we're actually gonna call it stack name push and pop. I'm not aware of any CPU architecture that has multiple stacks. Oh, 
But now, if if there ever is one, we're good. What's a 6502 emulator? Okay, so 6502 is a, a CPU um, used in a bunch of older 8-bit systems. It's an 8-bit CPU. Uh, and then an emulator is a piece of software that uh, to some degree of accuracy attempts to uh, exhibit the behaviors of the hardware that, or software, but typically hardware, that it is meant to emulate. Wait, does the 680XO have multiple stacks? SSP and USP. way too long since I've touched uh, 68k code. Although I was never particularly familiar with it. You can also use AO to A6 as stacks. Well, yeah, I mean, general purpose registers, of course, can be anything can be a stack if you try hard enough. And then it should be least than most. Cleaned up our stack interactions a little bit now, so that's nice. Nobody important five. How's it going? Uh, we are writing a 6502 emulator. Welcome back, Forgotten Proxy. Did you hear my response to your question? Actually, my return to subroutine, my um, jump to subroutine might be, in fact, I think that my jump to subroutine is broken because I missed a critical detail here that I will, uh, it'll be pretty clear what the problem is. Um, real quick.
finding set from interrupt x6. Alright, SBC time. Means really. Come and steal a lot of our ADC boiler. Subtract you set carry before the operation. If the carry is cleared by the operation, it indicates that a borrow occurred. Okay, so the carry is all right, so let's work that out. I want to subtract uh, my A register is 4. I want to subtract 4 from it. So I would set my carry to 1. 1 would be. Is this just a two's complement ad? This might just be, might just be unary not, and then the ADC logic works. That feels correct in my head, which means it's probably wrong. Okay, so right now this should be negative one. If carry was set, that gives us zero. That's four minus four. All right, let's set x to six. So this should give us negative two. 254. All right. X equals one thirty two with an overflow that would Does that work? I think that works. Yes, that would work. 
excitability. How's it going? Oh, the Dune trailer is out. I haven't seen it yet. I'm cautiously very excited about um, the upcoming Dune film. I am leaving this logic in its entirety instead of just leaning on the perform ADC method on the off chance that I'm not correct here. I shouldn't say off chance. There's a very good chance that I'm not correct here. Um, I want to be very clear that um, I'm not good at computers. So, so when I say off chance, you should just internally um, interpret that as huge chance, gigantic chance that I am wrong. Five plus six, four plus four plus four, three, two, four, four, three, two. Brilliant. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I I would say uh, a moderate fan of the Dune universe. Big part of my high school uh, reading. Did I never implement STA? Did implement STA. store instructions yet. Right. No biggie. That'll be some good We need zero page X, absolute X, Y, yep, and indirect X, Y, sweet.
Team Stories. Three, four, four, five, five, six, six. None of these are actually caring about whether or not we crossed a page boundary. Three, four, four. The X is where it starts with fives. It's now 85. We got three more classes of instruction to go. Yo, Zephyr, how's it going?
One, two, three, four, five more. Two. Push accumulator. Eight. Shame. That's right, we don't have pops, we have pulls. I hate it, it's cursed. Status, which is flags. Network, busting your butt. Can't stay long. You also be staying. Always good to see you. Simulator was 68. Yep, we got that. Cool. Now 08 and 2. This is push flags. Store X, store Y. That's that's the end of the official list. There, there are illegal instructions also, which are not yet implemented.
store X actually only has zero page, zero page Y. That's absolute. Okay. And this extra stuff. It's going to be true for the Y register as well, although we're going to swap X offset with a Y offset for X. Nine, six, eight, eight. Seven. So we're, we're twiddling a couple of bits there. Form STX on my absolute zero page. Great. C. Let's go ahead and hop up here. First thing first, do we blow up? We don't. That's good. Does the multiplication program we wrote still work? Sure doesn't. Neat. Oh, I know why. It's actually kind of fortuitous that, what, that literally the last thing that I implemented was one of the necessary... Um, the necessary uh, bits of code for this, to be clear, extremely bad, um, like purposefully uh, poorly written multiplication program. Going to be real, though. Pretty sure that's not how that's supposed to work. It does eventually terminate, which is novel. We loaded zero to X, good. Ink or INXing, just fine. Wrote. So, well, there's our there's our first problem right there. It's supposed to store x at eighty.
this. Okay. Let's let's verify that it's STX that is for sure the problem. Still doing something not, not great. Dex. I, I feel like Dex is doing something weird too. Zero page should be working correctly, so I'm a little bit confused about that. I will deal with that soon. Seems like it should work just fine. long. Eight thousand F. six eighty was my score X at eighty. We definitely didn't get stored at 80, we got stored at zero, unless... This is, yeah, 6502 test. Starting at zero for next 100 bytes. All right, so we've got 256 bytes and then add 8,000 for 80 bytes. So we load zero to X as expected. We're gonna ink a bunch of times. Now here, 8000D, which is 8680, store X at 0 page 80. 86, yep. Why am I... Well, that's wrong. It's not indirect. Why do I have bus reads in some of these... This is where the bug is, and what's particularly bothersome is that this has been working elsewhere. It shouldn't be. Video Gamer Games, how's it going? 
All right, well, this is where uh, my next bit of debugging is going to be. I've been going for two hours 45. Uh, now's a good time. Let's all take a break, stretch, stretch your legs, get some water. I'll be back in about five minutes. So legal instructions. Yeah, it's a great way to to uh, refer to instructions. But yeah, it's, it's undocumented instructions, but they are they were instruction crimes. I love it. Also, Popo, thank you very much for the 69 gay bits. Hell yeah. All right, I'm going to be right back, everyone. Um, and yeah, take a break. Look out your window. Look at something far away if you've been uh, staring at your monitor a bunch. Um, get some water, stretch your legs. We'll be back at it pretty shortly.
So, you know, I said earlier this stream that I think it's it's good um, to put mistakes and failures and just kind of falling on your face out in full view. I think that that's a good thing to do. And yeah, this is this is one of those things where I definitely have done that. Um, a couple of things that I definitely should be fixing here. This is class of mm. This is as things work. So what I'm gonna do is comment all of this out. Duplicate it. And there's going to be some stuff that breaks here now. Because a lot of these bus reads are extraneous. But sometimes we want to be writing to this page. We don't want to only be able to read. case where that's not going to be true is like our X offset. But even this, we, we actually just want the effective address. See, and look here. Here we're only doing one read, but if this was consistent with the rest of what I had done, we would be doing two reads. already add with carry is going to break. tells me that we're going to do something like this.
Synth Pop is back. How's it going? Also unironic. I'm not I'm not sure what you're asking. I've never I've never employed irony in my life. I don't believe in it. It is, though. No joke. Um, this time, no joke. Uh, obviously, me claiming to have never employed irony in my life is a lie. But falling flat on your face is a good thing. It is one of the best catalysts for growth of which I am aware. All right. We now can... Wait, no. Indirect Y... think that we need the reads there probably probably not for the indirects look at how i'm calling adc all right adc gets an operand and that operand should be without a doubt the thing that we're operating there. Here, we're getting an address. That's our big problem. Okay. Yeah. So we do have a use for read versus, uh, or resolving address, uh, the, the data held at a, a pointer versus not. Even these with extra need to have read. That's fine. We are doing double reads here. I was I was incorrect.
Oh, yeah, Nia talking about uh, undocumented instructions. So one important thing to remember about CPUs, just broadly speaking, is that it's easy to think of them as like this thing, this black box that you put some electricity into and then an answer comes out. But when, so when we look at opcodes, we scroll down to one. Actually, even better, let me hop over here. So here, 8680. Where are we? Actually, that's what we're pointing to right now. So 8680. Those numbers, like it's easy to look at that and say, oh, that's a number. And, you know, in this case, it, it means store X at uh, an 80 offset the zero page, which is strictly speaking, not wrong. However, what those numbers represent is actually bits, um, which that on its own also probably sounds tautological. So when I say bits, I mean a single wire going to a processor that either has electricity or not. That's what all of these bits, that's what the bits in our opcodes represent. So 86, well, let's uh, pull up IRB real quick, 86. convert that to binary. So we expect to see, depending on if you're high active or low active, either three or five of our pins brought high and the others brought low. So what that does when those pins are brought high or low, when, when, that, when the processor is put into the state that it reads those specific uh, that combination of high and low pins, it sets up basically a giant uh, Rube Goldberg machine that goes on. And this is why instructions aren't just like one clock, you get an answer, one clock, you get an answer. There's a lot of machinery inside of a processor that like all works together to end up having a specific effect. So when we look at, for example, the list of instructions available um, officially for the 6502, um, there's a lot, but there's not 256 of them. We have 256 separate possible instructions. The official list has fewer than that, and that's why we have uh, undocumented instructions. I've, I've really come to like the term illegal instructions since somebody said it a few weeks ago, and, and it, it, that one's kind of stuck in my head. It's great. Um, you're still setting up a program, and that program is gonna do something. To Nia's point, if we're very lucky, what happens is the CPU goes into an illegal state and your program crashes. That is optimal. What's worse is if you encounter an undocumented instruction, a legal instruction, what have you, and then you have the processor do something that is outside of its official specification, but the program continues running as if nothing has gone wrong, because there's no good way to know ahead of time with certainty that that was not supposed to be something that happened. Like, at some point, this is all just an electrical Goldberg machine that's going to keep on perpetuating itself until something stops it. And as long as, uh, as, long as everything continues working in a way that you don't halt the CPU, yeah, there's there's no right way to execute a wrong instruction. That's ab I love that's perfectly put. Yes.
sometimes I'm gonna need the address, sometimes I'm gonna need... I don't think this is... I don't think this is worth, um... Not worth this. Y offset, indirect X. We have a new API. We're always getting the effective address whenever we're not in immediate mode. Which means that I do have, um, I've got, I've got some instructions to fix. Put that on the clipboard, eh? Underscore read no longer exists. See these? Here we actually want the address because we're we're both reading from and writing to the address. I'm surprised that I didn't catch this earlier. This should have been pretty obvious. So I'm gonna double check the ASL logic. Make sure that we're kosher there. Yeah, see, we're... I don't know how I didn't catch this uh, a long time ago. Should have been real obvious. Hard sale. How's it going? Modern instruction sets, all undefined instructions are defined as an error instruction. Is that true? Good to know.
wasn't sure if that was uh, universally true across basically all of our um, modern CPUs. So, so ASL is good. Here we're gonna read because we've got an address. Branches. Pretty sure this should be two machine cycles. Add one if the branch is taken, and one more if the branch crosses a page boundary. never did any of this timing. Double checking. Branch not taken requires two cycles, three if taken, four if crossing a boundary. Okay. Presently, we are Three, four. Not taken requires two. Add one if the branch is taken. One more if we cross a page boundary. Okay. Actually, we can just do this. Much nicer. Ever do that thing where you're just not smart? Yeah, me too, all the time. Once again,
we're definitely not going to deref an immediate. That's not necessary. So here we expect the operand already to be address. Perfect. Deck we get to skip. Or setting A. And do need to read. Okay. Modern is up to interpretation. Fair. Paper Crane, how's it going? Yeah, I could sometimes. I've been trying to do it once a week um, on Twitch. Right, flag instructions definitely don't have to worry about. Okay, pretty sure the increment instruction is going to be expecting an address. Yes, we are. Delightful. Jump, don't need to worry about. Indirect jumps, don't need to worry about. are feeling good about that. Yay. So LDA is going to be I guarantee LDX is the same. Expecting LSR is expecting a address already. Yeah, this is a sixty five oh two emulator. Um, a lot of the work that we did up front. Um, three streams ago, two streams ago now, uh, was building out a DSL or defining emulators in a broad sense. With enough functionality for the 6502 hopefully to be well enough um, respected. Respected? Represented? Something. I don't know. It's it's three. I don't, I don't word anymore. So you expect an address, that's good. No op, that's going to be real easy to verify. A, I believe, is going to be... Okay, um, 
probably should implement uh, that. or with accumulator. Negative and zero flags are set. Cool. It's got immediate zero X. Absolute XY, direct XY. Ooh. Right. Register instructions. Won't be touching memory, so we're good. Expects it to be an address. Perfect. Okay, right. I think also should expect it to be an address. Brilliant. Turn instructions. It's fine. same logic as ADC, so so now STA, these all expect an address now. So might not be working. But at least we should be breaking differently. Abutu, how's it going? All right, we stored in the correct spot now, so that's good. All right, we actually look like we are adding as expected, except, oh boy. All right, so Dex is still doing something super weird. X is at 80. E16. Yeah, Dex is still behaving real weird. You ever just look proof straight in the face that you're either too tired or too stupid to be doing something? starting to look 
almost kind of functional. Asking 6502, is this going to help with Apple II, NES, PC Engine, or just a Tina original? Um, probably an NES. That, that's where I'm kind of leaning right now. Uh, for, among other reasons, the fact that it means I don't have to implement BCD support. The 6502 has decimal mode. Uh, there's a flag on the CPU, which I haven't implemented uh, in this simulator, which does. Um, Lohan, thanks for hanging out. Super hope you had fun, and I will catch you next time.
here that I'm going to run into. Yeah, this is an NES ROM. The, uh... The format of which I'm actually not super familiar with. Perfect flow. How's it going? Uh, currently, I have a CPU emulator, which uh, I am ready to begin testing, which is almost certainly not actually properly working, but it's pretending to work. If you have uh, a link to a quick rundown on how to load program code from a uh, NES ROM. I would love to know. Can we run a CPU emulator on a CPU emulator? Well, yes. Uh, it's, given the fact that this is all running inside a VM, um, we definitely can run a CPU emulator on a CPU emulator. most important question of all, will I also port Doom to it? Me? No, absolutely not. Never. Not in a million years. Will somebody? Probably already been done. I'll bet, like, <laughs> I, I absolutely bet that somebody has ported Doom in some capacity to the NES. Yeah. Playing Doom on an unmodified NES first hit. Hitter is 16 bytes of the program ROM is right after the header. Yeah, that makes sense. This definitely looks like a header. Like, there's our magic. N, E, S, and then 1A, then 0101, and then a bunch of nulls. I'm going to guess that 0101 is information about what mapper is at play. How big is the file? Uh, I think 24K? Was it 24? Yeah. 24K. Let's see. 0 to 3 constant. Ah, yep. NES followed by 1A, which is MS DOS end of file. Interesting. Okay. Byte 4, size of program ROM in 16 kilobyte units. 5, size of character ROM in 8 kilobyte units. Okay. 6 is flags, mapper mirroring, battery trainer. 7 is flags for mapper, NES play choice, NES 2.0. Flags 8, program RAM size, is a 0. 9 is TV system, rarely used. Okay. 10 TV system, program RAM presence, unofficial, rarely used extension. Whew. Then bytes 11 through 15, unused padding. Should be filled with zero, but some rippers put their name across bytes 7 to 15. Well, 24 makes sense for that. Uh, what? 16K plus 8K would be 24. So, 
the um, the text for NES test. Unfortunately, uh, this is where I start running into um, into issues at um, at the not being familiar with the NES emulator development scene um, level. Uh, I am meant to load in uh, load in the test program and then run it on automation, uh, which is uh, referred to as just setting your program counter to C zero zero zero, which is fine. I assume that what I do is I discard sixteen bytes and then I just dump the rest of it into RAM at um, starting at 8,000, but that sounds overly simplistic, and I'm willing to bet that that's not what I should be doing. Load the PRG at 8,000? Okay. Um, where do I load the character ROM? I don't know where those are mapped to because I haven't looked into the NES's specific. Ah, oh, the CHR is PPU data. Thank you for the URLs. If I recall my reading correctly, um, you actually technically get the starting program counter by um, inspecting. Uh, you're, you read a arbitrary high address off the bus. Um, I think it's FFFE FFFF. need oh, to see that's going to be 16k
Let's add mirroring. I know that the NES did weird memory mirroring stuff. Is here. Don't actually have to allocate anything on the device. Public read offset. Hell yeah. There we go. All right, mirroring is. Chaos, how's it going? Huh? Okay. I have eight K of RAM from six thousand to seven F of that. I assume 16k from zero to no that's that is wrong because I think it's yo Angani thank you very much for the raid welcome in everyone Orphus you are super helpful
Oh, awesome. That makes my life much easier. My night going pretty well. Um, maybe might have things almost appearing to work, which would be pretty nifty. Just getting a test program set up so that last thing that I do tonight, uh, you know, will be showing off the fact that failure is good, actually. So, we've got our RAM mirrors, which are mirrored for both read and write. RAM has write method set. RAM and ROM have read method set. ROM mirror has read method set. ROMs are read only. Might be a problem. I think, yeah, right just does nothing by default. That's fine. Orphus flow. So, according to the README, which of course might not be accurate, but um, uh, per the note that, um, that Kevin Horton wrote in the README for Nest test, um, for emulator authors, this test program, when run on quote unquote automation, i.e., set your program counter to uh, C1000 hex, um, will perform all tests in sequence and shove the results of the tests into locations 2 and 3 hex. Which tells me that I should be able to, once I get things loaded... Oh, do I have ROM allocking wrong? I do. If 
been Unlocking 800. CPU registers at hex 2000. Which apparently mirror forever <laughs> for like almost hex 2000 bytes. 4000 to 4017. A APU and IO registers. 4018 to 41F. You and IO. 4020 FFFF is cartridge space. All right, so 8000 FFFF is usual ROM uh, location. All right, so this looks good so far. I have drop. Bytes dot drop. There's 16 bytes. Take. This is hex 4000, right? Sure looks like 16k to me. Cool. So now, See. Okay, so far it didn't crash, which is nice. That didn't take long. Just 29 stacker. Yeah, that's fair. Ufu, how's it going?
All right, well, we got to A3, at which point we broke. We jumped to A3. Probably not what we want to have happen. It's 4C. That's, I guess, the person that we're actually hitting. Also, just to make sure that I'm not... Yours. Corpus Flow, I am not 100% sure uh, where the additional RAM that uh, you're mentioning is supposed to be located. I don't see it. Um, Simonius uh, Katarn, how's it going? First thing first, let's change the dump. Let's use C00, which should not change a thing. It does, in fact, change a thing. It's dump doing like. There we go. All right, so 4C, F5, that is the instruction it's trying to run. It's essentially sending us to 4C. Double check. Or C, F5. Cool. All right. So very first instruction that I encounter, not not one that I implement. Jump. It's a jump. So makes sense. F5 
5c5. We jump to a2. Not... Sure how that's working. You ever, you ever realize, like I do frequently, you're just, you're not always the smartest. So I was trying to do an indirect jump. So I was, I was inspecting that memory, pulling a value from it, and then jumping to it. C5, F5. That looks better. All right. This is great. We actually are starting to run very quickly exposing bugs in the emulator. Find my thing. <laughs> in We get to a point where we jump to two. You two. I am now going to start jumping near where I'm actually. Um, Seen that log. I do have that log up now, yes. Some dude, four, five, six. Uh, yes, we have taken off every zig. Yeah, I think that, given that it's almost 4 a.m., um, yeah, it's, this is Ruby. Yeah, given that it's 4 a.m., we're getting closer to a working emulator. We know what the next steps are going to be. Um, now is probably a good time to call it for tonight. Pretty good progress. Fairly happy with uh, with where we've got. We found a couple of kind of major bugs that just sort of slipped past while we were um, building things out to begin with. And in theory, the bulk of or the upfront work is done, not the bulk. Um, next time, I think it's it's going to be time to start. Producing a log that we can use to um, to make sure that things are as we expect them to be. I also want to get started on making use of uh, all of the metadata that we built into the DSL to begin with. Um, somewhere, somewhere. 
we've built everything that we need. Like, we've got all the metadata handy to be able to... Um, to, to be able to uh, present a disassembly of whatever we're running. And I think that'll be real cool, too. I think that'll be helpful. Horn Dan, if you just showed back up, yeah, you showed up just in time for the last run of the night. Be careful, an NAS CPU is not a regular 6502. The only difference that I'm aware of, and you are very clearly much more knowledgeable in this arena than I am, so you can tell me if my understanding is incorrect. Uh, the only difference of which I'm aware is that the NES doesn't implement the uh, decimal mode or ADC and SBC. Anything else, I'm not I'm not aware of any other major differences. Yeah, the BCD stuff. How long does it take to code an emulator? I mean, that one's tough. Um, the answer there is I mean, over the course of the Tech Tuesday streams that I've done this with uh, so far, we've got like 10 hours into this project. So you can have something which is good enough and working well enough for a lot of things, for a lot of tasks. And with this, um, you know, this isn't entirely heads down work either. This is interacting with chat. This is taking things pretty slow because making it so that this is at least somewhat didactic is kind of important to me. If I just wanted to bang out code, I would do it offline. <laughs> the point of streaming is the, the social aspect of it. But you can have something that's good enough uh, with a big trademark by that word, you know, good enough for some things, you know, relatively quickly. And then you look at something like Dolphin or Bee's Nest, uh, emulator platforms that are extremely accurate and shockingly performant given their accuracy. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of man hours that have been put into those platforms. So somewhere between those two, those two ends, somewhere between, let's say, four or five hours for Pretty crappy, but, you know, functional for some tasks. And, you know, many, 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 many thousands of hours. Yeah, taking it slow, Orphus Flow got some basic NES output in a week. We got to where you see right now. This is, yeah, an aggregate total of about 10 hours of stream time with no work offline. It showed. Okay, so the 6502 is an old 8-bit CPU. Uh, this is, at this point, basically a variant of it um, without uh, one of the major things that the 6502 supported. Uh, essentially, a not functional yet. Uh, We're not at the point where we can say that we made something on stream that works, but uh, this is approaching uh, the CPU that uh, was used uh, in the NES specifically. Yeah, I think this is a good stopping point for now. Um, next Tech Tuesday will actually be on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Um, yeah, this is it's been fun so far. I'm expecting to get a bunch more uh, Tuesday streams out of this project before you know I try and figure out what we're gonna do together next.